Beneath the vast expanse of the world's oceans lies a mystery that has confounded scientists and ignited the imagination of thrill-seekers and conspiracy theorists alike. It is a sound so powerful, so otherworldly, that it has been dubbed the Bloop, a chilling enigma that echoes from the depths, hinting at the presence of a colossal oceanic monster long lost to time. Get ready to dive into the murky depths of the unknown as we embark on a journey to uncover the secrets of the Bloop and unveil the ocean monster of the past. The Bloop is an intriguing phenomenon that has captured the attention of scientists and enthusiasts alike. It refers to a mysterious, ultra-low frequency sound detected in the deep ocean. The discovery of the Bloop dates back to 1997, when it was picked up by a network of underwater microphones, known as hydrophones. The enigmatic nature of the bloop sound immediately sparked curiosity, leading researchers to delve deeper into its origins and significance. Since its detection, various theories have emerged attempting to explain the source of the bloop, ranging from geological events to marine creatures. The bloop's distinct characteristics, such as its immense volume and unusual frequency profile, have made it a subject of great interest and debate among experts in the field. Extinct fish are species of fish that no longer exist in the present-day natural world. These fish species have vanished from the Earth's waters due to a variety of factors, such as environmental changes, habitat destruction, overfishing, and natural selection processes. The extinction of fish species can have significant ecological implications as it disrupts food chains and alters ecosystems. Furthermore, the loss of these fish species may lead to a decrease in overall biodiversity and genetic diversity within aquatic environments. One example of an extinct fish species is the coelacanth. This prehistoric fish was once thought to be extinct, but its astonishing rediscovery in the 20th century caused a paradigm shift in our understanding of ancient marine life. The coelacanth represents a living fossil, as it has remained virtually unchanged for millions of years. This remarkable fish provides valuable insights into the evolutionary history and biodiversity of aquatic life. Another well-known extinct fish species is the Typhactinus. This gigantic predatory fish lived during the late Cretaceous period and was an apex predator of its time. With a length of up to 20 feet, the Typhactinus possessed a powerful jaw filled with sharp teeth, allowing it to capture and devour its prey with ease. Fossil evidence and scientific studies have enabled researchers to reconstruct the physical characteristics, behavior, and ecological role of this extinct fish species. The discovery and scientific study of extinct fish species are often based on fossil remains found in sedimentary rock formations. Paleontologists meticulously analyze these fossils, including bones, scales, teeth, and sometimes soft tissues, to reconstruct the anatomy and physiology of the extinct fish. By examining the fossil record, scientists can gain insights into the habitats, distribution, and adaptations of these extinct species. Understanding the factors that led to the extinction of fish species is a crucial aspect of studying their history. Environmental changes, such as ships in temperature or sea levels, can disrupt the delicate balance of ecosystems and put stress on fish populations. Habitat destruction, resulting from human activities like pollution, or the destruction of critical spawning grounds, can also contribute to the decline and eventual extinction of fish species. Overfishing is another significant factor in the extinction of fish species. Unregulated and unsustainable fishing practices can deplete fish populations, disrupting their reproductive cycles and genetic diversity. Additionally, the introduction of invasive species into new habitats can have detrimental effects on native fish populations, potentially leading to their extinction. Scientific research and fossil discoveries provide essential insights into extinct fish species. By studying their morphology, behavior, and ecological interactions, scientists can better understand the intricate web of life that exists in our oceans. This knowledge not only helps in conserving and managing present-day fish species, but also highlights the importance of sustainable practices to protect aquatic ecosystems from further loss of biodiversity. Exploring the potential connection between the bloop and extinct fish has been a subject of scientific investigation. The bloop sound's origin has remained a mystery, leading to speculation that it could be associated with undiscovered or extinct marine creatures, including fish species. Step back in time. and imagine a creature that ruled the ancient skies with its enormous wingspan and awe-inspiring presence. 
Join us on a journey to uncover the mysteries of Quetzalcoatlus, the legendary giant of the prehistoric world. Quetzalcoatlus inhabited diverse habitats during the late Cretaceous period, and understanding its habitat and distribution provides valuable insights into its ecological preferences and geographic range. Fossil evidence suggests that Quetzalcoatlus occupied regions of North America, particularly what is now present-day Texas and New Mexico. These areas were characterized by expansive coastal plains and inland environments, offering a variety of habitats for this remarkable pterosaur. Quetzalcoatlus likely thrived in both coastal regions and inland areas, where it could take advantage of diverse food sources and nesting opportunities. With a wingspan reaching up to an astonishing 33 feet, it stands as one of the largest known flying creatures in history. Its skeletal structure consisted of hollow bones, reducing overall weight and facilitating flight. The wings were supported by elongated finger bones, with a membrane of skin stretched between them, enabling Quetzalcoatlus to achieve powered flight. Its neck and head were elongated, culminating in a sharp, toothless beak, which it likely used to snatch and grasp its prey. One of Quetzalcoatlus's most notable adaptations was its incredible lightweight build. Its bones were thin-walled and filled with air sacs, reducing mass while maintaining structural integrity. This adaptation allowed for efficient flight, minimizing energy expenditure during prolonged soaring. Furthermore, Quetzalcoatlus possessed large, strong chest muscles, essential for generating the powerful wing flaps required for takeoff and sustained flight. Another adaptation that contributed to its aerial prowess was its long and slender wings, providing ample surface area for lift and maneuverability. This wing structure, combined with its streamlined body, enabled Quetzalcoatlus to soar effortlessly through the skies, gliding on air currents, and covering vast distances in search of food or suitable nesting sites. Quetzalcoatlus likely had keen eyesight, enabling it to spot potential prey from high altitudes. Its adaptations for flight, including its lightweight skeleton, powerful wing muscles, and specialized wing shape, allowed it to occupy the ecological niche of a soaring predator capable of scanning the landscape for suitable hunting opportunities. Quetzalcoatlus, as a formidable flying predator, had specialized feeding habits and a diverse diet that supported its large size and energetic demands. Fossil evidence and anatomical studies provide valuable insights into its feeding adaptations and dietary preferences. As a carnivorous creature, Quetzalcoatlus primarily fed on various types of prey found in its environment. Its long and slender beak, devoid of teeth, suggests that Quetzalcoatlus relied on a unique feeding strategy. It is believed to have employed a method known as skim feeding or surface dipping, where it would fly low over bodies of water or vegetation-rich areas, swiftly skimming its beak along the surface to snatch up small animals, including fish, crustaceans, and other small vertebrates. Quetzalcoatlus likely used its exceptional eyesight to spot potential prey from the air, allowing it to accurately target and capture its victims during its low-level flights. The sharp curved beak aided in grasping and securing the prey before consumption. Its large size and powerful flight muscles would have enabled it to carry relatively large prey items back to its nesting or feeding site. While skin feeding is believed to have been its primary feeding method, Quetzalcoatlus may have also opportunistically scavenged carcasses or even engaged in occasional hunting on land. The flexibility and adaptability of its diet would have allowed it to exploit a range of food sources, ensuring its survival and successful reproduction. The availability and distribution of prey species likely influenced Quetzalcoatlus's feeding habits and diet. Changes in marine ecosystems or ships in the abundance and distribution of prey could have influenced its foraging patterns and dietary preferences. As a flying reptile, Quetzalcoatlus likely had a solitary lifestyle, with individuals primarily operating and foraging independently rather than forming cohesive social groups or flocks. Fossil evidence suggests the presence of communal nesting sites, indicating that multiple individuals may have gathered in specific areas to lay their eggs and protect their young collectively. In the sun-scorched landscapes of a lost world, a fearsome predator stalked its prey with unparalleled agility and speed. Today, we venture into the thrilling realm of Carnotaurus, the speedy horned predator that once ruled the ancient lands. Brace yourself for an expedition through time as we unveil the captivating story of this extraordinary creature. 
Carnotaurus, known as the meat-eating bull, possessed a fascinating array of physical characteristics and unique adaptations that set it apart from other dinosaurs. With its distinctively short and deep skull, adorned with forward-facing horns, Carnotaurus presented an intimidating appearance. Its robust and muscular body was supported by long and slender limbs, allowing for remarkable speed and agility. Additionally, its reduced forelimbs, featuring only two fingers, showcased an unusual adaptation that puzzled scientists. The most remarkable feature, however, was its highly specialized skull, which was lightweight yet reinforced with bony structures, enabling powerful bites. Carnotaurus, with its exceptional physical abilities, employed distinctive hunting strategies and exhibited fascinating feeding habits. Thanks to its incredible speed and agility, it likely relied on its swift movements to surprise and overtake its prey. By utilizing its long and powerful hind limbs, Carnotaurus could swiftly close the distance between itself and its target, ensuring a successful ambush. Its binocular vision provided enhanced depth perception, enabling precise tracking and precise strikes. When it came to feeding habits, Carnotaurus was a carnivorous predator preying on a variety of animals that roamed the ancient landscapes. Its specialized skull, featuring sharp, blade-like teeth, suggests it was well-equipped for slicing through flesh and tearing apart prey. Carnotaurus likely targeted medium-sized dinosaurs and other smaller animals, using its powerful jaws to deliver lethal bites. Its reduced forelimbs, while not suitable for grasping or holding prey, may have played a role in stabilizing captured animals during feeding. Carnotaurus inhabited the diverse landscapes of the late Cretaceous period, primarily in what is now known as South America. Fossil evidence suggests that it roamed the ancient plains, forests, and river systems of present-day Argentina. The region's favorable climate and abundant food resources would have provided an ideal habitat for this formidable predator. Although the fossil record primarily points to Carnotaurus being found in South America, it is important to note that the exact extent of its distribution is still being explored. As further discoveries and research take place, the understanding of its geographic range may evolve. Nonetheless, the current evidence indicates that Carnotaurus was localized to South America during its existence. The specific environments that Carnotaurus inhabited were characterized by a mix of open grasslands, dense vegetation, and water sources, such as rivers and lakes. These diverse habitats would have supported a variety of prey animals, offering Carnotaurus ample opportunities to hunt and thrive. Fossil discoveries and ongoing scientific research have shed light on the intriguing world of Carnotaurus and provided valuable insights into its anatomy, behavior, and evolutionary significance. The first fossil remains of Carnotaurus were discovered in Argentina in the early 1990s, leading to a flurry of excitement among paleontologists. These fossil findings have provided a wealth of information about Carnotaurus' physical characteristics and adaptations. Well-preserved skeletons have revealed details about its unique skeletal structure, including its specialized skull, powerful hind limbs, and reduced forelimbs. These features have sparked numerous scientific investigations and discussions surrounding the dinosaur's hunting strategies, locomotion, and overall lifestyle. In addition to skeletal remains, fossilized footprints attributed to Carnotaurus have also been unearthed, offering valuable clues about its gait and behavior. By analyzing these tracks and comparing them to other dinosaur footprints, scientists have been able to reconstruct the movements and social behavior of this ancient predator. Furthermore, advanced imaging techniques such as TT scans have allowed researchers to explore the internal structures of Carnotaurus fossils without damaging them. These non-destructive methods have provided unprecedented insights into its brain structure, sensory capabilities, and the intricate details of its skeletal system. From survivor to extinction, the story of Lystrosaurus unveils the triumphs and tragedies of an ancient era. Join us as we journey through time and unravel the mysteries surrounding the rise and fall of this remarkable reptile shedding light on the fragile nature of life's journey on our ever-evolving planet. Lystrosaurus, an enigmatic creature from the distant past, holds a remarkable status as an ancient survivor. Emerging during the Permian period, this unique reptile endured one of Earth's most devastating mass extinctions, the Permian-Triassic extinction event. Its survival through such a global crisis highlights its remarkable evolutionary success and positions 
Lystrosaurus as a key player in the fascinating story of life's recovery and reemergence after mass extinction events. As a medium-sized reptile, it had a robust and barrel-shaped body, adapted to endure harsh environmental conditions. Its limbs were positioned beneath its body, allowing for efficient locomotion and weight distribution. Lystrosaurus had a short, sturdy tail that provided balance and stability during movement. One of the most notable features of Lystrosaurus was its skull. It had a unique snout, elongated and equipped with a beak-like structure. This beak, composed of keratin, likely helped it grasp and manipulate vegetation, suggesting an herbivorous diet. Its teeth were simple and peg-like, suitable for grinding plant matter. In terms of size, Lystrosaurus varied depending on the species and age. Adults generally ranged from about 1 to 2 meters in length, with some reaching up to 2.5 meters. Its body was covered in thick, scaly skin, providing protection against the elements. Lystrosaurus had a high metabolic rate, indicated by its large ribcage and well-developed respiratory system. This likely allowed it to thrive in various environments, from harsh deserts to wetlands, adapting to different climatic conditions. Its ability to withstand such diverse habitats contributed to its success as a survivor. During the Permian and Triassic periods, Lystrosaurus could be found in regions that are now part of present-day continents such as Africa, Asia, and Antarctica. Its fossils have been discovered in a variety of geological formations, including floodplain deposits, river valleys, and even near coastal areas. Lystrosaurus displayed a preference for habitats with ample vegetation, such as forests, wetlands, and floodplains. These environments provided an abundant supply of plants for it to feed upon. Its sturdy physique and ability to withstand harsh conditions allow Lystrosaurus to adapt to arid and semi-arid regions, expanding its potential range of habitats. The semi-aquatic nature of Lystrosaurus is also evidenced by the discovery of its fossils in river and lake deposits. It likely spent time near water sources for feeding and possibly even for thermal regulation. The availability of water would have been crucial for its survival, especially in regions experiencing seasonal fluctuations in rainfall. In terms of lifestyle, Lystrosaurus is believed to have been primarily diurnal, meaning it was active during the daytime. It likely engaged in a sedentary or slow-moving lifestyle, characterized by a routine of feeding, resting, and seeking shelter. Lystrosaurus was likely a solitary animal, with limited evidence suggesting any significant social behaviors or complex interactions with conspecifics. The herbivorous diet of Lystrosaurus consisted mainly of plant matter, including ferns, cycads, and other vegetation abundant in its habitat. Its beak-like snout and peg-like teeth were well-suited for grinding and processing plant material, allowing it to efficiently extract nutrients. Since its first discovery in the early 20th century, numerous Lystrosaurus fossils have been unearthed from various parts of the world, particularly from regions that were once part of the supercontinent Pangaea. Lystrosaurus, a resilient creature, played a significant role in the Triassic world as one of the most abundant and widespread land vertebrates of that era. After surviving the Permian-Triassic extinction event, it emerged as a dominant species and thrived in diverse ecosystems across different continents. During the early and middle Triassic periods, Lystrosaurus occupied a range of habitats, including floodplains, forests, and semi-arid regions. Its adaptability allowed it to inhabit various environments, from human and lush landscapes to more arid and seasonal regions. This versatility contributed to its success and widespread distribution throughout the Triassic world. Thank you for joining us on this captivating journey into the world of Lystrosaurus. We hope you enjoyed this video.